to pack them up, boys. Tonight, I told you that I was going to uh, uh, show pictures of Nigeria and talk about the ministry there. So let's just kick the, uh, the for those watching by internet, we'll just uh, kick the computer over on the screen. And uh, I'm going to talk about, I told you Sunday, I was going to talk about this scripture. And you'll see as we get into this, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. One translation says, says that you bring him, he'll bring you before the kings of the world. And uh, that's some of the things that we're going to see tonight in this. Well, I envisioned that this map would actually show up bigger than it did. So uh, this... Uh, this, of course, is a map of Africa. Uh, if you can see that red dot, that's Nigeria. And then over there's just a little tiny line in there, and that's Togo. And both of those are important because we're going to see tonight, we're, we're going to see uh, uh, pastors from our churches in both places. Um, there's, uh, in the pictures tonight, you're going to see particularly... Uh, two states. Right there is Delta State and uh, Arago is, is up here. Uh, and, and those are the two states that you're going to see. So that you get a picture, I, I have a lot of questions sometimes about uh, we see on the na news the uh, particular uh, places that there are uh, Muslim uprisings and, and where they're blowing things up and stuff. Um, there are uh, Borno State, uh, Yolo. Uh, these, these five states right here in this corner is what we hear on the news so much that it sounds like it's all of Nigeria. And it's only those five states up there. Uh, Nigeria is made up of 36 states. And it's five states that make the news. Very simply like the United States where there's just little pockets of things that happen that make the, the news, that make us think it's, it's the whole uh, world. You know, they hear, they hear on their news the same kind of things we do. Um, one of our churches that is down here, uh, this is... Uh, Lego State right here in this corner goes all the way to the border of this country here is called Benin. Um, one of our churches is there. Two of our churches are here in Delta and two of them are up in uh, uh, it, it's pronounced Abahu uh, and that's the, the ones that we're going to look at uh, tonight. This is a picture of our pastor. You remember the little line that I showed you? Uh, that was Togo. This is Pastor Innocent. He is our pastor in Lome Togo uh, Church. And uh, Lome is the, uh, the largest city in Togo. Um, there's some differences between, you know, to, to a lot of us here in the United States, we, we look at uh, uh, Nigeria and Kenya and Tanzania and Togo. And I mean, it's just Africa. But there's, a, there's uh, severe differences in them. Um, Pastor Innocent is very blessed to be in Togo because it's a country where they, they believe in giving. That church, uh, is, God has prospered that church in a way that they support our ongoing work in Nigeria from the Togo church. So a little tiny country like that um, there's some other things. It's a, it's a more uh, secure place. They don't have to worry about being out at night. Uh, if they come out and, and, and walk home at, at midnight, it's okay. Nobody's going to mug them. Um, it's a safe place to live. Uh, this pastor here, I want you to uh, uh, watch as you see different pictures. You will see him in everything we've ever done because... This pastor 
always gets on a transport to get to where uh, I fly into and where we, we do most of our ministry based out of, uh, he has to ride a transport bus. Well, when I say a transport bus, I'm talking about a minivan where they sit shoulder to shoulder like this. And there'll be 16 or 18 of them in this minivan. And he rides that to get to Asaba, uh, Delta State, Nigeria. He has to ride that bus for 17 hours. He has never failed to be there when I arrived, and he's never failed to stay until I go home. And he's, he does that every time. Uh, here, him and I are again in, in one of our uh, buses that we have over there, or vans that we have over there. This one happens to feel like home because it's an American-made Ford van that uh, I can actually read the speedometer on it because it's got miles per hour on it. Um, and Scott would be happy to know that uh, uh, it even gets as good a gas mileage as the other one now because they fixed something in it and it gets great gas mileage. Now, better than we get here, I don't understand, but uh, that's the, the truth. This is one of our... Uh, by the way, DSWM stands for David Simmons Worldwide Ministries, which is how we're known in the rest of the world because they don't know what Cowboy Church Ministries or Silverado Cowboy Church, they don't understand a cowboy. They, they call my hat a cowboy cap, uh, but they have no idea what a cowboy is. Um, so uh, this is uh, one of our evangelists, and, and you'll notice that he is reading a Bible that uh, somebody from this church uh, had the vision. Bud and Lena had the vision of, of buying Bibles, study Bibles, to give to pastors. And by the time I had been there for 24 hours, we had now where, where the Bibles went to so that uh, to give you a idea. They went to our pastors first that are in Bible school. Uh, Pastor Innocent is in our Bible school now. Uh, even though he's been a pastor for many years, one of the things that I've found in Nigeria and Togo is they have a, uh, some knowledge of the Word, and it's enough to help to, to be able to uh, do their daily work but they don't have a full knowledge of the Word. So we put them in Bible foundations to start with, and, and you'll see uh, some pictures of that as we go along with Bible foundations. They get from salvation, and, and most of you here have, have been through that program, so you know that uh, they get uh, from salvation all the way through the gifts of the Spirit and, and everything uh, in between on that. Uh, I, I've got to tell you that, and, and this is the other thing that we did is, is with James being the overseer, the bishop in Nigeria, he counted the pastors that he had under him, and he got that many Bibles. Pastor Innocent took four ba Bibles back to Togo for the pastors that are under him in there. And when John Bull, who is an evangelist of us, and, and you'll see uh, occasionally through this, you'll see his picture. When, when they're building a block wall, uh, a block fence, John Bull's right there working with them, even though he's an evangelist and, and spends his, his weekends uh, traveling and, and uh, doing crusades and, and different things. Um, I heard him talking to James and trying to t convince him that he was one of his pastors and he really should give him one of those Bibles. <laughs> and he finally won out because you can see he got one. This picture is at uh, uh, pastor's training seminar that you'll see some more pictures later on of uh, what, uh, that we did a two-day pastor training seminar, which is basically in the United States, we'd call it a minister's conference, but our idea with a pastor's training seminar is that we can do some in-depth teaching for pastors at, at how to reach their people and, and to help them in that area. Uh, here's uh, Bishop James, uh, and, and Bishop means uh, in, the, in the U.S. we don't use that, the same terminology. That's our overseer. 
in, of the Nigeria and the Togo churches. He uh, goes back and forth uh, in Nigeria and in Togo, and this is him addressing uh, the group uh, at the pastor's training seminar. I got to tell you something that James has done. Uh, he has shown how important it is to be an overseer to him. Uh, we had paperwork that had to go to Lagos from Asaba after I got there and we went, I went to immigration the second day I was there uh, for mine and Kathleen's uh, green card or residence permit. Uh, they do call it a green card there, much like we do, with the exception it's a plastic card with our picture on it. Uh, and uh, he looked at me and he said, we're not putting this in, a, in some courier's hands. I am taking this because I am your son and I'm the overseer here. So he spent three days riding transports and then I, I was able to get him on two airplane flights to get him back quicker. Uh, but it took him three days. He had to go to Lagos first. Uh, then he had to go to Abuja, which is the national capital. And he spent, um, I found out the, when he got to Abuja, he, he, was, he couldn't get a hotel room or anything. So he followed the driver of the taxi that he had ridden in uh, from uh, the airport to where he was going to sleep, which was basically a bus stop. And that's where he slept that night so that he could be at immigration at five o'clock the next morning. And he spent from five o'clock in the morning until seven o'clock that night in immigration again. And he told me, he said, uh, I said, do you have money to get a hotel room? He said, yeah, but I won't get a hotel room. He says, they've already seen your passport. And uh, they call Kathleen mummy, said mummy's passport. Uh, they speak uh, UK English, so that's mommy, okay? Uh, but uh, he said, they've already seen your passports and it's safer for me to sleep in the park where everybody's around than it is a hotel room where they could break in and steal your passport. A passport, a US passport in Nigeria is worth about $6,000. So, you know, it's nothing to steal them. So he literally went to the park and slept that night uh, because he couldn't get a plane ticket back. And, and I said that because he's really shown how uh, important it is to give uh, what he knows to be needed in that place. It's a, it's a, it's a biblical God, his blessing, uh, the, his influence in Nigeria and Togo because he has uh, continued to everything he does is for uh, the ministry that that we do together. Um, this is the second day of the pastor's training seminar because he was uh, in the first day of the pastor's training seminar, he was in immigration in Abuja. Uh, and so he wasn't able to be there. He flew in, changed his clothes, and went with us out there to the... Uh, I didn't even think he was going to be able to stay awake. Uh, and once the Holy Spirit... Uh, started talking through him. Uh, it was like I didn't think he'd sleep for a week after that. Uh, this is uh, our pastors in Ubalaka, uh, in uh, Abba State. Uh, this is uh, Pastor Christian and Peace Patrick. This is the only trip that I didn't see them uh, because they called and said uh, that they didn't have money to travel. And so they weren't able to come. Uh, on this trip. These are pastors that wanted to be, they actually emailed me three years ago through Cowboy Church Ministries and said the Lord told us that we were supposed to be uh, connected with you and they didn't even know that I was going into Nigeria at that time because they came through Cowboy Church Ministries uh, website. This man right here, okay, this is how God sets things up. This is our driver. Uh, James told me six months ago or seven months ago that he had let our other driver go because he uh, never could, uh, let's just say he couldn't get his relationship correct with the Lord. And so um, 
I found that there were a lot of things that happened, and, and Scott can attest to this, that uh, there was, uh, there was, it's like, you know, one of the things I've, and you know that I've shared this uh, with, with you, uh, be careful who you associate with, because whatever anointings on them will come on you. And it seemed like it was just turmoil all the time. When, you know, this is the first, first times that that driver wasn't there, and it's the first time there was no turmoil going on. And so this is uh, not only our driver, but he does, uh, he, he does a lot of things. Uh, he's helped with the block walls. He uh, helped the well driller pull a well the other day. I found out this is what God has brought to us there. Uh, by the way, uh, he uh, gets paid whatever he eats at James's house. Uh, never asked for anything. Um, his, while I was there, uh, the tools that he had, uh, and, and Harvey will appreciate this, uh, the tools that he had are junk. And so several of his wrenches and, and sockets and stuff broke. And he would never say anything. And I said, do you not have any good tools? And he said, no, Dad, I don't have good tools. He said, I would like to have some good tools. I said, how much do they cost? And uh, Friday, I'm going to send him the $200 that he needs to buy the, the German-made tools that he wants because all he does is work for, work for us and, and keep things going. Fact is, we lost a fuel pump on the, one of the vans on the way from Lagos to, to Asaba, and in two hours, he had dropped the tank, borrowed wrenches from another guy uh, across the road, dropped the gas tank, put a new fuel pump in it and had the gas tank back, back in and we were on the road again. Um, then I found out I, God has sent us a guy that has an engineering degree. He looked at a well. We went in to look at a well and we'll look at this a little later on. Uh, and, and after we left this well that, that we're going to refurbish, uh, the senior advisor to the governor took us into another place and he wanted to show me this great new well that the government had done. And we got there and their well wouldn't run. And the guy that was, was overseeing the well, he didn't have the expertise to figure out why it hadn't run. And, and David, in five minutes, went in and had the well running and told the guy, um, this was a real simple thing. Um, told the guy, you know, if you'd have turned the ignition off on the generator, you'd have been able to start it and a battery wouldn't have been dead. But David, being an engineer, also looked at the well that we're going to refurbish, and he told me exactly what it was going to take to refurbish this well, which put it in the budget that we're going to be able to do it. And so God, God sends people that uh, are the very best at whatever you need, not even knowing that you're going to need them. Um, this is uh, Pastor Andrew, and what he's looking at down here in his hand that you really can't see in this picture is uh, a tablet, an uh, uh, e-reader. And that's what we took Bible school over there on, is uh, we, we were able to, to get five pastors started in Bible school this trip. Uh, the e-reader has uh, the Bible foundations on it, as well as, you know, God sends us great people, right? as well as Lori had not, uh, not only uh, fixed all of the teaching uh, so that it would go on there, but she put it on and then found a Bible that would go on there too. And so right now he's trying to figure out how he can look at the book, listen to the teaching, and read the Bible all at the same time. I finally had to show him that he had to ha have his Bible in his hand when he's using uh, the e-reader to, to listen. And, and so he actually sat in there and, and uh, listened to, to salvation and tithing both that night and started working. I don't believe that he'll take the year or year and a half that it takes to get through Bible school to get in. And one of the things that God has set up with our Bible school is uh, the ministry went through everything it took, which was a a long ordeal. It wasn't like getting uh, incorporated in the U.S. Plus, uh, we had to get a business license and different things. But now, every pastor that finishes Bible school, see, one of the things, because they don't have 
any kind of Bible school like this, uh, nobody has ever been able to give them a pastor certificate or a, a, a completion certificate. What that means is they can go into government prisons. They can go into anywhere that is federal government or state government because now they're going to have a certificate in their hand that says, because we are one of the only ministries that's ever spent the, the time and the money. And it costs quite a bit of money to, to do this. I, b I believe it was about $1,800 by the time we were done. And I'm glad I didn't know what it was going to cost before we started because I might have waited a little bit longer. But we, uh, everything was done. And then when it was, when it was finished, we didn't even know we needed a business license. And a business license came with my letter for residence. So uh, I didn't even pay for the business license and it was, supposed to, it was supposed to cost us what would be the equivalent of 250 US dollars to get the business license and they just sent it in to us. So um, the, these pastors are very excited. This, this pastor has a church in Abusa. He's running about 45 people right now. Uh, he has, I, I was, uh, I went to see what had happened to uh, the church. One of our, one of our pastors uh, was murdered about four months ago in a bank robbery. And actually James had met this pastor coming. He, James was coming out of the bank and this pastor was going in and the guys went in at the same time that this pastor did. Uh, that held up the bank and, and he got shot in the, in the bank robbery. Um, well, I was really concerned about the people because, and, and this is, Scott was in that church uh, in, a, in Abusa uh, with me when we were there in January, and I was really concerned about the people. There was, what, 25 people, I think, in, in that church. It was a fairly new church, um, and he had just got hooked up with us when told us at Allah, actually, that he wanted to be uh, a pastor that was under, under the, our ministry. And I was excited because he's a word of faith believer, um, moved in the gifts of the Spirit, and uh, was just, and then when this happened, I was concerned for all the people. Well, I was happy to find out that, that half of them have gone to Pastor Andrew's church now. So, you know, they didn't just fall by the wayside. They they uh, got uh, moved into another place. Uh, here's uh, uh, James and, and Innocent. Uh, uh, Agbor is where I did the, the pastor's training seminar. And, bud, you'll notice what kind of Bible Pastor Innocent has in his hand. Um, this is John Bull again. I told these guys, go pray, and I came back, and this is the way I found them, okay? Uh, oh, there's Pastor Innocent. I told him to pray, and I came back, and I found him that way. Uh, there's James. I, I enjoyed taking all these pictures, by the way, and I told them. I said, I'm going to make sure that I put them on the board. And I looked for Pastor Andrew's picture. Um, let's just say that I really hope that he didn't catch all the flies that were in the uh, van because he was just laid back with his mouth open and sleeping. Uh, this is at the pastor training uh, seminar uh, in uh, Agbor, Delta State, Nigeria. You're going to find out. I'll write down what state a lot of the things uh, that we do in. You're going to find that most everything we do is in Delta State. I know that when God gives you favor someplace, there's a reason. And you're going to start seeing the things that we're doing in Delta State and the favor that God has given us uh, with, with uh, the people and uh, the people in government. Remember, I read this scripture for a reason about uh, putting you in front of uh, important men. And, and you'll see why. Uh, this is at the pastor's training seminar. And I put this in here. Because I'm going to tell you, that guy right there, that pastor, I don't even know his name. We talked in, in uh, quite a bit, but uh, I've never had, uh, other than one of uh, Brother Jerry's uh, uh, guys, Abuela, can keep up with me, but I've never had anybody. This guy was translating. and, and Now, Nigeria is English, but there are people that don't speak English enough that 
they, that they always translate in the African dialect of whatever that area is. Uh, Nigeria is made up of five different tribes and every tribe speaks a different African dialect and nobody understands each other. So that's why English is the common language in, in Nigeria. Uh, but this guy, before he was ever done translating, I'd go on and preach some more and he'd just pick up and, I mean, we, it wasn't, I, I talked and he talked and back and forth. He was, he was great at that. And I believe that God sends people like that. I've actually asked him that when we do crusades to be there. And, and Scott witnessed some of the, uh, we had great crusades in Allah, but the guy that I had that was translating there, um, he'd look at me and he'd go, huh? <laughs> and, and I'm very careful there. They, they don't use uh, any slang and all words are proper. Um, they're not jeans, they're pants and, you know, and things like that. So, you know, sometimes you, I don't, I don't have to think anymore about it because every part of the world I've, I've been in to do ministry other than the United States is that way. And uh, so I, this guy didn't have any reason to look, keep looking at me going, huh? Because I had used proper, proper words. Uh, but this, this particular man was, was really awesome. This is one of the buses, uh, and, and you'll see another picture of it that's a little bit better. Uh, you've heard me talk about the brand new bus that was given to the ministry uh, just about a year ago now. This bus was given. Now, this is significant because uh, James uh, emailed me one day and he said, uh, Dad, your anointing for healing has come upon me. And that's what the Holy Spirit told me. The next day, they brought a woman that had been in an insane ward for two years, lost her mind. He laid hands on her. Her mind was completely restored uh, and the next day, now, when I left Nigeria about a month before this, I told him, I said, you see that bus right there? He said, yeah. I said, now, we've been traveling in old cars that didn't have air conditioning on that particular trip. And I told him, I said, if you ever want Kathleen to come, we're going to have to have a car that has air conditioning because it's not that she won't get in in sweat. It's that I don't want her to have to. So I said, you see that bus right there? He said, yeah. He said, uh, I said, uh, God's going to give us one of those. A month later, when he laid hands on this woman, nobody, him and I were the only ones that knew about that what I'd said about the bus. He hadn't said anything to anybody. Uh, you know, you don't have to tell God what you need. God knows what you need. When you ask him, it says he gives. And... Uh, so the next day, this lady came with the keys to this bus, brand new, zero kilometers on it, and said, the Lord told me that you... Nobody knew that this lady... She's been, she came out from an insane ward. Nobody knew she had the money to buy something like that cash. I mean, this is Nigeria, and she's in an insane ward. She paid cash for this, brought him the keys, and said, tomorrow I'll come back, and I'll register it. And she did. She came back and registered it the next day. So, you know, this is the kind of God we serve. We serve a God that gives over and above all we could think, imagine, or ask. And when we need, I, I, will, I will tell you that uh, I showed him a 30-passenger bus on this last trip. I said, that's the next bus the Lord's going to give us because we know that uh, with that kind of bus, we can actually... Uh, cause the crusades, people that don't have a way there, we can go get them and, and haul them into these crusades and things. This is the front of the bus. All of our buses over there, both the Ford and this one, say missionary on the front. It's really cool. The reason, I, it really bothered me at first. I thought, I don't need to tell everybody I'm a missionary. It doesn't, you know, I'm not, I'm just here because the Lord sent me. Well, here's what happens because it says missionary. All the little checkpoints that the police used to stop me and used to, uh, the, the military stopped us because it says missionary, they just wave at you. And we don't even have to stop. In fact, uh, since David's the driver, 
it would be really wise if they don't step out in front of the van. I told him, I said, do you know those guys are carrying AK-47s? He says, doesn't matter, we have favor. And he just blows the horn and keeps going and they just wave at him. Um, so all of a sudden I decided it didn't wad me up too bad for it to say missionary on the front. <laughs> See, Scott never got to enjoy all the stops that I went through where they went through all my paperwork and then asked me what I was doing and all kinds of stuff. And, and this, that doesn't happen anymore. So that's neat. You as a church and uh, a couple of other people from uh, the ministry partners uh, last year when James and Antonia had lost uh, their baby uh, and, and didn't have a place to live because they didn't want to go back to Lagos uh, because of that was where the baby was born and grown up. This is their house that you helped uh, pay to, for them to rent. And uh, the next, the, the, this bus sitting out front is the Ford that, that we have there. Um, and then this is, this is actually, here's the other bus, the one that I told you that was brand new. It's, it's, it's like a big Toyota is what it is. I, I don't know what the brand is actually, but uh, it may be a Mitsubishi, but um, it's a common one over there. And uh, this is kind of a big duplex. Uh, well, <clears throat> for a, a duplex there is bigger than most of our houses here. And so they have a very nice place. Um, there, uh, uh, it has, Dave, here's what kind of engineer David is. David completely wired this place so that they could have air conditioning and they actually have air conditioning and their neighbors don't. So, you know, that was a blessing. Of course, that, that depends on whether there's gas in the generator because a lot of times they don't have electricity there. The electricity is, is uh, real marginal in Asaba because there's so many people there. Church leadership and teachers, uh, this was at, at the training seminar in, a, in a, uh, Agbor. So you can see, I mean, this place was full uh, of, we, we told the pastors, bring your church leadership and your, your, all your teachers. And so we had a, a time with all of them. Um, remember this man, because the next picture I'm going to show you, uh, I was about to pray for him uh, when they, in this picture, this is his wife standing with him. Well, this is me praying for him, and you can tell by the, the color of the sleeve, and <clears throat> Roddy will appreciate this. About the, about the time he started down in the Holy Ghost, he was right over the drummer's drums, okay? So the drummer pushed him back up so he didn't go down on his drums, and when he started down in the Holy Ghost, he grabbed my arm, and him and I both went to the ground. So uh, that's why I said, remember this man. Um, this, uh, almost the entire uh, leadership team wanted to be prayed for for a greater anointing in their life so they could go to a new level. And that's what's happening here. And if you look, you can see almost everybody in the whole place is, is up. And, uh, and finally, uh, and, and this is what I love about, about uh, our overseer and bishop. He... Uh, he watches and he knows what's going on. I didn't know some of these people had gotten in line three times. <laughs> Scott's laughing because he saw it happen that way. And, uh, and pretty soon, uh, James came out and he just said, ah, go sit down. You've already been prayed for. And I thought... <laughs> and, and pretty soon he just told me, he says, it's time for us to go. Let's go to the trip band because he realized that I had already been through the line, maybe even some of them twice. <clears throat> and, uh, but one of the things I appreciated about this uh, training seminar, these people were hungry. Uh, and they would have stayed till right now. If, if I'd have stayed, they'd have still been there, and, and they didn't care. Uh, and that's always important in those. Um, this is, a, this is what one of the things that we're doing. We're not going in to do crusades. I actually never had a vision to do crusades in Nigeria. 
My vision is to train people to be leaders in life through discipleship, just exactly like the Lord had. I shared that last Sunday. So my vision is the pastor's training seminars and all of those things. But the Lord told me, he said, I want you to go in and I want you to empower James to do what his vision is by doing it with him. And that's the reason we started doing crusades because that was James's vision in that. Well, here's what's happened with the anointing of the, the healing and, and getting people baptized in the Holy Spirit and things. Um, James has begun to step into the place when I'm not there that he's doing these. And this is a crusade that he did in Agba uh, just three weeks before I, was, <clears throat> I got there to do the pastor's training seminar. So, and you can see this place is, this place was full. Uh, I looked at the place and I'm going to tell you that it, it probably held somewhere around 1,500 in that building. Uh, and it was completely full. This was something else. Scott saw me teach James this. This was just a picture of one man, but there actually, I, there was another picture I was looking for and I couldn't find it uh, today, but th it wasn't actually the one man. There were uh, about 150 behind him. These people wanted to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, I showed him uh, when I was there and, and Scott was there and when we were at a law, uh, there was about uh, a thousand one night that want to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And I took water and just started squirting it on them uh, to simulate laying hands on them uh, in that place. And they all got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so uh, that's what James is doing in this picture. And, and it's something that we realize that and, and, and we have to realize this here, uh, everything that we do, what we're doing is we're training people to carry on. And that's exactly what he's doing in that place. I'm sorry you can't see this picture as well. The people watching by internet can see it better than you can. Right there, that leg at one time had uh, it appeared that maybe it had been broken. Um, this spot on this boy's leg in this picture is protruding out about this far off of his leg and it's busted open. It's been that way for five years. James laid hands on him. I was in this family's house uh, the day that we got done with the pastor's training seminar. So in three weeks time, this boy's leg had almost completely returned to normal uh, between the time that this picture was taken and the time that I got there three weeks later. So you can see what God's doing and doing through the pastors that were training there to uh, lay hands on the sick and see him recover. Um, this is the prayer camp. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the prayer camp as we look at, at these pictures. Uh, this is, Scott's been on the prayer camp, and the uh, fact is, uh, there's probably a, a picture you're going to see when Scott was there. Um, the significant thing about the prayer camp is there are no prayer camps in Delta State. There are in some of the other states. Now, their people will come. When we, we, when we call it a, a prayer camp, they call it a praying camp. And what they do is they will leave their home when they want to hear something from God or they have something that's on their heart or something that they need. They will travel to a prayer camp and they will stay there until they hear from God. And if that means that I don't come home for three weeks, I'll see you after I hear from God. And, and that's something, you know, and, and, and it's a different thinking and culture for us because, I mean, we pray in our house. But sometimes, you know, and you know that, that I once a year will go off by myself for a week and, and hear from the Lord for the ministry over the next year. Um, and that's what the prayer camp is about. The significant thing about this one in Delta State, this one belongs to us. Today, uh, they transferred the deed into uh, DSWM. 
uh, ministry. It was never in a name that was a registered name in Nigeria, and somebody could come up and contest it and take it away from James before. Now it's in, a, it's in our name. It's about uh, just under two acres is, is the size of it. Um, and the reason that the fence is important and it's not completed yet, but it will be within about 30 days, the reason the fence is important is because this prayer camp is on the edge of the bush and people won't come stay overnight and things because they could come out of the bush and murder them. And so the fence is very important for the aspect of people being comfortable enough to come and pray. This place is big enough. Uh, again, here's the fence. This fence needs to be uh, have uh, four more blocks put on the top of it to be completed. Um, and uh, it is the only prayer camp in Delta State. It's the only prayer camp for two states around. So we know the significance of the people that are going to come. The reason that it's important for, uh, for a prayer camp to us, because we could go, well, you know, why is that so important for, for us to have that in Delta State? The reason that it's important is because it's so large that we, and people will be used to coming that we'll be able to get them to come to crusades there and we won't have to be traveling out so much to do crusades as much as people will be used to coming into this place and we'll be able to, to have crusades where there'll be thousands of people come to know Jesus. Um, this is what, the, what it's looked like before the, uh, they started the, the fence. Uh, on one side, there's a little tiny fence that's four blocks high uh, that we're going to build on top of, and that's all that was there when we got there. That's actually the fence at, at Regal Paint Company, which is the place in front of us, um, which they have been really, really good to us. They give the guys power. They let them store cement there so nobody steals it. Um, but, of course, the man that owns Regal Paint uh, is a man that I've rented a hotel room from him uh, three, three times when I've been there th through, through the entire time I was there. And so we built a relationship with him, which he also uh, loans us power, and, and he has power a lot of the time. Um, these are the blocks that they started building the, the uh, fence out of. These blocks, they hand-mixed the cement right on the site and poured all those blocks for the entire thing. Instead of buying them out, it was, it was cheaper to do it this way. And uh, what James decided was they could pray over the blocks as they went up because we made the blocks, they prayed over the blocks, and as they go around, uh, they're gonna be uh, uh, prepared already. Um, I asked him what we were gonna do with these blocks because when we bought this piece of property, um, those blocks were the only thing that was there. And we've not used them yet, so he's got a special place that he wants to use them because they, uh, they were something that uh, uh, they're particularly made blocks, and they're kind of made of a clay. Uh, again, the fence, and you can't really see him in this picture, but right there on the edge, there's a man standing there. That's our evangelist, John Bull. And so John Bull doesn't just preach, but he's been there to lay blocks and mix blocks and, and everything that needs to be done. Uh, this is the well that is on uh, the prayer camp. Here's what's significant about that well. And, and right now we only have one, one uh, tank up on the tower. We actually have three more tanks to go on that tower. What is important about that is there's some uh, men that had a vision uh, to uh, told me one time, uh, called me and said, "What uh, the Lord told me to ask you about the healings in Abusa. I, come, I just got back from Abusa where the prayer camp is doing a crusade. Well, the thing that stood out to me in the, in the healings was they had stomach problems and the women weren't able to get pregnant. And the Lord told me that both were related to bad water. So I prayed over their water that God had blessed their water and removed sickness from their midst. But, you know, and, and, and I'm going to tell you something that the, uh, you'll see his picture in a minute. Uh, the, the 
senior advisor to the governor on religious affairs, he made a statement last week in a meeting him and I were in. He said, prayer's good, but action's better. And, you know, we can pray all day long, but if we don't put our, our action to it, our, our corresponding actions with our faith, then uh, all you're doing is begging God to do something when you have the ability to do it. So when I asked God, uh, when I told him, he said, okay, that's all I wanted to know. He says, where are they getting water? Well, they're drawing water out of the Niger River. And uh, the Niger River has cows standing in, in it uh, doing their business and people dipping water right here next to them and uh, fishing boats and, and all other kinds of things. And so it, it, they're, they're sick because of that as well as the women are unable to get pregnant because of the bad water in a lot of cases. So these men called me back and said, uh, God told us you're taking spiritual water, we're to take natural water. This particular well, uh, there has been people that have been saved already from coming to get water because they don't have to go to the river, they can come get water out of this well. But when the prayer camp comes, and James had already told me this, uh, I gave him the money last week uh, to do this, to buy two more tanks. So now we'll have five tanks on this property. And when they come in the gate, there's going to be a, a, a whole setup of, a, of faucets where they can fill their water jugs and then stay and pray. But it, they'll know where the water is, and it'll make them come in for the crusades. And that's the significance of having a water at this place. It is the only water uh, in the area that is good, clean water. Uh, this is the senior advisor to the governor in Del of religious affairs in Delta State. Uh, his name is Dr. Uh, God's Power uh, Agabuta. And he told me what, uh, I, I asked him, I said, is there significance in your your name and he said yeah he said when I was born he he said my dad said it, it, it was the power of God and so he named me God's power and uh, he said because his his mother was older um, so I asked him if his father was a Christian and he said no and uh, but uh, but his mother got saved before he was before she went home to be with the Lord and, and uh, God has now remember I told you that your gift will make you sit before great men. This man, when, uh, and Scott got to be with me, and, and, and I believe that this is a significant thing with Scott being with me when, when I first met or was asked to come to his office, uh, was because Scott's been with us for almost 19 years now, but at that time, 18 years. And so it was significant that they know his name. By the way, his name is Pastor Scott in Nigeria. And uh, so uh, Dr. God's Power asked me, he says, how is Pastor Scott? Uh, and greet him for me. And, and so this man has taken us places, and, and I'll, I'll wait and not get ahead of myself. Um, this is at the prayer camp when he came to view the well for the governor. Uh, so that the, the governor could have a report. Uh, this is actually the water running on there. Uh, and this man right here is our well driller. Um, I met with him last week because next week we'll drill a uh, well in Ishiagua. And uh, the following week uh, we start refurbishing a well in the senior advisor's uh, uh, village. And, and we'll look at that well in a minute. This man, when he came and sat with me and I told him what I wanted, God has sent us another man that he's not just a well driller, but he, he gets a, a, a report on every well, tests all the water. Uh, one of the pictures I didn't put in there because we couldn't see anything. We had held a piece of newspaper up over his computer so I could see the well report. Uh, he's going to furnish us well reports on everything that he does from this time on. Well, when he got in the van with me last week, he had uh, got tangled up in the well drilling machine and lost the end of these two fingers uh, on one hand. And so I prayed for him and, 
And I told him, I said, I'm going to be excited to come back because I believe uh, that the Holy Spirit just spoke to me that, that uh, you're going to supernaturally grow the ends of those fingers back. And he said, I receive that. And uh, he's, a, he's not only a spirit-filled Christian, but he's a part-time uh, preacher too. So it's, uh, it was significant. Here is Pastor Scott in the middle of the Abusa Bible Association meeting uh, when we were there. Uh, it's another place that we were invited to come and uh, to sit with them. And, and I'm teasing Scott a little bit because every time they said, Pastor Scott, he just turned smooth red. Um, if it's a good thing he didn't have a red T-shirt on. You'd have never found him. Uh, uh, th this is, uh, again, the Abusa Bible Association. Uh, and uh, they had asked me to do the, do the devotional. And it's really cool when you have uh, pastors and evangelists that are hooked up with you because John Bull is going to stand behind me and make sure nobody comes up behind me while I'm there. And so that's John Bull standing behind me uh, there in that, uh, while I was doing the devotional that day. In Nigeria, if you, if you preach, you wear a coat and tie. Don't care who you are. They expect me to wear my hat. And so that's never, in fact, I looked for this picture today. There was a, a guy that, the guy that I was talking about that, that uh, at Allah that translated for me, um, he took and, and taped two posters with mine and Kathleen's pictures on them. And, and made him a top hat out of them and wore them all week long during the thing. And he looked at me and he says, because I didn't wear my hat the first couple of nights. He says, I'm wearing your picture. Are you going to wear your hat? And so the next night I wore my hat at the thing. But uh, it was, it was kind of funny because uh, Kathleen hasn't been yet. And everybody in Nigeria knows her because her picture's been all over Nigeria. Um, this is an altar call at... Allah when we were there in January and you can see you can't you can't hardly see the end of the people that are standing out there um, this particular altar call was salvation and this altar call was a altar call for healing uh, I just happened to get the picture of, of this little boy if you can see he's got his hand on his head and his other hand on his stomach because one of the things because you realize you got for one thing, it's not safe to get down in the middle of the people a lot of times when it's like that because there, there was probably somewhere around seven or 800 people at the altar that night. And so there's no physical way for me to lay hands on all of those people. So I tell them, I say, put one hand on your head and, and, and that's a representation of my hand on you right now. And the other hand wherever it is that you're hurting, whether it's your leg or your stomach. or And so this little boy, um, I think Scott was behind me taking these pictures, if I'm right. And uh, he caught this little boy with his ha one hand on his head and one hand on his stomach. Um, and we've had, I, I'm going to tell you what, what we're going to do at the next, the Lord's already told me what to do at the next crusade. The next crusade, he told me, he said, heal the sick and let them give testimonies and watch the people get saved because the testimonies of the people that got healed. So I'm excited about the next crusade uh, and, and what we're going to do because we're going to do it completely different than we've ever done anything else because that's what the Lord said to do. Um, and so, uh, because we had all kinds of testimonies. One night there, uh, somebody left a wheelchair. I don't even know who left the wheelchair. Somebody left a wheelchair sitting up there at the platform. Uh, when we cleaned all up, there it was, sitting there. And uh, so God did some great things at this crusade. Um, you remember I said that uh, Proverbs, what I read to you, that God will cause you, to, your gift will cause you to sit in front of great men. I didn't know that the senior advisor's been trying to get me to go see this guy uh, for almost two years. Um, well, he didn't just, all, just try to get me to go see him this time. He took me over there, and then he said, I have to go. I'll see you in a little while. Well, I sat with this guy for uh, about an hour. Um, 
I have prayed. We have a proposal that we've been trying to get into Delta State. One of the things that happens in this proposal is for every Nigerian from Delta State that I get to go, they'll give $20 to the ministry in Nigeria so that we can do some more stuff. And this is to go to Israel. They send, the government pays for a thousand Delta State people to go to Nigeria, go to Israel every year. I don't even know how to present the, the, the proposal because I don't want anybody to think it's about me. This man is not, I didn't know this until we sat down and we were talking. He's the head of the committee. And he looks at me and he goes, you know, I don't really like the tour company that we're going with. I said, I know who you're going with. I don't use them anymore. He said, uh, well, I don't like this. I said, that's why I don't use them. He says, and what I really want is I want somebody that'll go and teach on prophecy. And well, part of the package I've got is myself and John Somerville are going to go and teach prophecy while we're there in Nigeria. And so he lays this whole thing out and, and what he doesn't like. And then he looks at me and he says, got any ideas? I said, yeah, I have a proposal for you if you would like to have it. He said, in two weeks, I'll be back from Israel and I want your proposal because we'll just do that. And God, or, you know, this is how God sets everything up. I didn't have to present anything. He asked me for it. And God just did a, a, a great work. And so this was a, a man, this, this is a man that's over uh, many, many churches. He's a bishop for the Church of God. Um, he's right under the, the Archbishop of the Church of God. Church of God happens to be uh, like a spirit-filled word of faith church in Nigeria where the, some of the other denominations aren't, uh, aren't that way. In fact, um, it was, uh, some of you know that I was with uh, uh, Bill Winston at a, at a uh, conference, and it was a Church of God uh, conference that, that I was with while I with him while I was there. Uh, this is uh, again Dr. God's power, and in the background here you can see a tower. The next picture will show the tower even better. Uh, and uh, this here is a, a generator house. Um, this was a government well that was drilled uh, about 12 years ago, and it worked for one month and the government would never come back. They had a, a, a irreputable uh, well driller that put a faulty pump in the ground and it only worked for one month. This is the source of water in that village where they're getting water. Now, walking up here to this where they're drawing water out of, it looks like, like a 16 inch irrigation pipe uh, with, with a a hole in the top you can see just a square hole and they drop a bucket down in there where the water comes from it comes out of a uh, pond of stagnant water right outside of town that comes underground into the middle of the village and that's where they're drawing water out of if you have a weak stomach don't watch the next picture you see the white stuff down there in the bottom that's where the water is, and that's worms. The water smelled so bad, I literally was sick to my stomach and almost didn't make it back to the van without, <clears throat> I won't go into that any farther. It smelled that bad, I can't figure out how they're drawing water out of that. And those people have been drinking that water for 12 years because nobody would come back to fix their well, and nobody knew how. Had of a beautiful generator there, uh, that has never been used. But this village has taken care of everything because they've been believing that God would send somebody that would refurbish their well uh, for them. In fact, the houses in the village, they have even put, uh, and I'll get off of that picture so that we don't have to look at it anymore. Um, we, uh, the houses in that village, they have all put indoor plumbing in their houses believing that God would send somebody by. So there, there's pipes down the middle of the street for about 200 meters. We're going to extend the pipes 
uh, another 100 meters in one way and go about 400 meters the other way. And all I have to do is connect to the water in, there in that place. That This well will be done by uh, another, another partner of the ministry that, uh, that sent in uh, finances for a well. It's really cool because the tank is already there. And so everything, this is a very, very, very expensive well. Uh, and by the time I, I figured out all the budget on it and uh, the, the budget came in right at what it would cost us to drill a small, small well, uh, which our well driller drills deep wells uh, and everywhere he goes, he says he, he gives us a deep well for the price of a shallow well, uh, which God just blessed us with a man that has a, a heart for the people and, and he's willing to give a little bit on the other side. Wendy. Yes. With, you mean that's going to watch over it? Dr. God's Power's uh, house is about, uh, even though he lives in the, in the state capital, his wife lives in the house and teaches in that village, and he lives uh, about a half a mile from this place. And so I know that this well will be taken care of with no problem. Uh, it happens to be, we, we rode in the bus for almost three hours each direction just to go look at this well. So it's quite a long ways from uh, where, where our base is. Um, so I guess that was the last one. Why don't, put, the, put up the other thing, would you please? Here's something else that's, that's about to happen, and, and this will be the last thing we look at tonight. There's a significance in this sign. This sign says, this water is here to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ and made possible by David Simmons Worldwide Ministry and their partners. And then, of course, it has mine and Kathleen's uh, picture and name there. And then, uh, now I've been told by Antonia that we can't use this picture of her because she doesn't like it, but it was the only one I had tonight. Um, she said, I look better than that. I don't want that picture on the, on the sign. But, and then it has there. Now, here's the significance about us being able. This on here, it doesn't look like it's very big. That's seven feet tall and 14 feet wide. And the significance of being able to put this up in every village that we put water in is because when we come back there, this is going to go up on the tower for the water tanks. Even on the government well, we already have permission from the village that this is going up on that government uh, well uh, tower. The significance of this is it's places that we've never been before. Ishiagua, uh, we're going to start that well this week, and that's the, the partners that drilled the well in, uh, in Abusa uh, that are doing that one. And uh, we've never done a crusade or a pastor's training seminar in Ishiagua. But because this is going to be there every time they come, and, and what our well, well driller's doing at each well is he's putting up, it's, it's like a 14-foot long uh, cement with tile over it uh, stand because I told him I want to have water spigots in a way that when they turn loose, they shut off. They're spring-loaded so that that way nobody could ever forget and leave the water on and drain our water tanks. And so he's putting four spigots at each one where they can set their water jugs down there, no matter how big they are, and fill them up and then, and then go home with their jugs. By doing that, by putting this up there, and they know it's the Lord Jesus Christ that made this possible, then when we go in and do a crusade, thousands of people will come just because they've already been drinking the water and they want to meet who uh, furnished the water. And, and it's Jesus Christ that furnished the water. It's not the partners, it's not the ministry, but it's Jesus Christ that furnished the water. And so this was just another open door for us to be able to do uh, what we're doing. Some of the men that I didn't have pictures of, um, the Bible says that he'll cause you to sit in front of great men. Uh, one night, uh, one, one day, the senior advisor to the governor came and got me, and he says, I want you to meet the water commissioner. 
He's the governor of Delta State's water commissioner, and he's the one that takes care of any water project that the government's doing. And so he started telling me about all these places he had water projects. I'd already been to these places, and they didn't have water. Um, so I don't know exactly how, what their vision is. It might mean that they were going to do it someday or something. He, he thought that that well in, uh, that the federal government did in that one village was still functioning. See, they don't even know where their water really is still working. Um, but the, the Lord set it up to where I sat with him. We talked. The government is going to deed about uh, an acre and a half to us in the state capitol uh, to have a Bible school in that place. And the water commissioner told me that his vision for the state capitol was to have wells in certain areas that they could tie together and it would feed the whole city. Um, and I told him, I said, we'll drill a well because the, the piece of property that we put in for is up on a hill on the end, one of the ends that he wanted to have a well. I said, we'll put a well there. We'll tie it in so the whole city can have it. Now, here's something that was given to us for next November. Uh, we were, I've told you before that the governor was going to give us a stadium to do. Well, I prayed. I said, Father, I want, the, I want divine appointments and I want the best place. They gave us what is like a, a micro stadium with a big screen television that everybody comes for miles and miles and miles around to watch football, soccer. Um, they don't play American football, by the way. Um, and he looked at me and he said, that's yours to do a crusade in. Well, the place that it's at, even the people that don't get the advertisement, they'll be coming by in transports and stuff and fill the whole place up. And so it was, a, it, it was just something else that God gave us favor in, in that place. He, uh, one night him and I were sitting at supper and uh, actually it was the night before I was leaving. And a guy came in and he called him over to the table. It was one of the president's right-hand men. And he sat down and started talking to me uh, and he says, when are you going to be back? And I told him, by the way, the president's right-hand man went to school in Maryland, and so uh, we, uh, we talked about the U.S. And, and things. He hasn't actually been back very long. And uh, he told me, I said, he said, I have four kings that I want you to meet. Well, the significance with, with kings in that area, every village, the oldest man in the village, and uh, Scott sat with one of them. We, uh, the Pa in Abusa is the king of the village. He uh, just had his 106th birthday um, and uh, asked to see me every time that, that we come. He told me one time, he said, the reason I asked to meet you is because the history of our village would be incomplete without the mention of what's happened here. When he was talking about the crusade uh, and all the people that had got healed in Abusa. Now, that's not about us, but it's about what Jesus Christ can do. So when he said, I've got four kings I want you to meet when you're here next time, that just meant we were going to have another open door in four more villages to spread the gospel. And so there's some really great things that happened. The last thing that I did, the governor's uh, not first in charge under him, but second in charge, his birthday party was uh, the morning before I was leaving, uh, his 40th birthday. Well, his 40th birthday party was full of about 250 government officials. And I sat with the man uh, that was representing the governor because the governor's actually in the U.S. right now. And uh, then sitting next to him was the man who is the land commissioner and when they introduced me to him, the, governor, the governor's guy, he'd been talking to me like we were just old friends. He looks at me and he goes, man, you need him. And uh, so, you know, God ordained things that he set up. And uh, then the last thing they did was they asked me if I would come up and pray to open a birth. I'd never been to a birthday party that they played uh, worship music. And that's what the band was playing was worship music. So it was cool. And so they asked me to pray for... Uh, 
his name was the Honorable Taiju uh, Asichi and uh, had me pray for him. I pronounced his name incorrectly. And so the comedian that was the MC got up and began to roast me and tell me, said, that name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You have to say Asichi. And uh, so he had me get up in front of everybody and say the name right again. But it so impressed the man uh, that I prayed over that he came to me, left, left all of his friends at the party because I was going to get on a plane right after that. And he came out and he said, would you come to my house the next time you come? And he said, I want your phone number because I'm coming to the U.S. in Dallas uh, sometime in the next six months. And so God has, has set some things in motion in Nigeria that have, has given us favor to be able to preach the gospel. That's all the, the favor is about. It's about Jesus Christ, just exactly like this town. You know, the thing that you guys did yesterday with the outreach in this town you know, I'm sharing with you about Nigeria because I realize that there's so many times I come back and I just, I don't say anything. And that's why I decided I was going to to share with you tonight uh, about what, you, what, what you're doing in Nigeria. Because it's not us, it's God has done such great things and given us such great favor because of the prayers that go up from this church and from the other partners of the ministry and, and the covering that's over us. And, and God is just so good to us. Uh, I can't tell you that there, uh, and actually I can tell you there's only been one time that there was ever a tense moment. And I shared that before. Um, and in fact, I looked at Scott and I says, are you okay? And he says, man, I am. <laughs> and everything was good, you know, and realized that's the only tense moment I've ever had anywhere traveling in the U.S., which doesn't mean there's not going to be tense moments, but there's going to be tense moments right here. And what we have to remember is God is so good to us and, and so, takes such great care of us uh, in everything that we do and how how he just watches over us in all things. So, Father, I thank you for the faithfulness that you show to each and every one of us and the favor that you give us. I pray over uh, the partners of the ministry and, and over this church that, Father, that you'll abundantly bless them and watch over them. Uh, Father, give, a, give each one a new kind of favor in a new area. Father, we are so thankful for all the great things that you do in our life. And Father, we know that it's only because you love us that you do those and that we can show, show you off. Father, make us uh, faithful in showing you off in all that we say and do. That Father, that it brings favor to your name. That we become the fragrance in the earth to your name. Father, I pray that each and every one of us are faithful in that area. Father, as we go from this place, help us to tell somebody, put somebody in front of us that we can tell about Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus and by his blood, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do we.